Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 25 map guide. Today we're going to take a look at Zilonka, the third and final map included with the base game Farming Simulator 25. But before that, this video is brought to you by Desert Ox Farms and Good Old Boy Gamer. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So Zilonka was the premium expansion map for Farming Simulator 22, and those who picked up the premium expansion, welcome back. I hope you enjoy what Giants has done with the place. Those of you who have not picked up the premium expansion, well, welcome to Zilonka. You're going to find that this map has nice, subtle rolling fields that are going to be easily combined into larger fields, if that's kind of your thing. This map is a standard 2 kilometer by 2 kilometer square map, and let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. So as you can see, typical to Eastern European maps, let's say Polish style maps, you're going to have long rectangular fields. And a lot of these fields are going to be easily merged together because the little roads between them are simply going to be dirt roads that you can easily just kind of plow up. So you can really go with some big time agriculture on this map if you want to. Of course, we do have all 25 standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 25 available on this map. And if we take a look and see our lands, our farmland, we start up by owning farmland ID 45. That is the main starting farm. If you happen to load this map up and select that you do not want to own the main farm at the start, well, you're going to be able to buy this for $145,680. In addition to farmland 45, we also own farmland ID 46, which can be bought for $75,888. Now, there are two additional farms on this map. We have a farm to the north. Farmland ID 7 for $893,000. And we have a farm to the south at Farmland ID 90 that can be bought for $803,000. Now, all three farms do have chicken coops. So if you buy any of those farms, you will start out with some chicken coops. This map has two new productions added to it in a biogas plant and a cement factory. Being that this is one of the maps included with Farm Sim 25, it's no doubt that we have the base game Farm Sim 25 growth calendar available on this map. As I mentioned, we do start out with a chicken coop on all farms. So our starting farm has a shed with open pasture chicken coop. We do have contracts available on this map. And as far as available productions, we have nine available productions plus the piano manufacturer, which again, I don't classify as a production because we don't actually get a deliverable product. We have the bakery that is gonna be able to produce bread and cakes from both regular flour and rice flour. We have a BGA that is gonna accept manure, silage, slurry, and sugar beet cut and produce energy, methane, and digestate. We have a carpentry. We have our cement factory. We also have a potato processor. We have our preserved food factory our sawmill, our soup factory, and our spinnery. Of course, the piano manufacturer, if you deliver 5,000 units of planks, you will build one piano over time, and then it will auto sell the piano. And if you own this facility, you'll get money when the piano is sold. If you do not own this facility, well, then it's simply a sell point and you'll get money when you deliver the planks. We do not own any productions on this map at the start. There are Seven different cell points on this map, or I guess I should say eight cell points if we include the train cell point. Of course, we do have the ability to sell all of our base game props, productions, and other outputs that are available to us here on Farm Sim 25 because, of course, well, this map is included with the base game. So, of course, it's going to cover all of the bases, if you will. As far as our starting vehicles, we start with a modest list of starting machinery. We do not have any hand tools. And as far as collectibles, this map has 50 collectibles. They are the golden apples. And if you collect a golden apple, you will get $5,000 in reward. Now our NPCs are on this map. Walter is here at the starting farm. Hello, sir. So this farmhouse will not be able to be sold. As far as all the other buildings on this farm and the other two farms, yes, you can sell any of these buildings other than the farmhouse that Walter is associated with. 
So you'll be able to completely wipe away the two farms if you wish in order to then design something of your own. As far as our other NPCs, well, good old friend Ben, he can be found over here in this little residential area just to the west and south of the main farm. Kate is going to be found up here at our animal dealer. And Noah is going to be found over here at our spinnery. And then David, oh, David. David's going to be here in town, right along the main street, right across the street from our bakery. Since the shop is so close, I thought, why didn't we just walk over here from the starting farm location? It's literally across the street, as you can see. So we have our trigger here for our shop. And then our maintenance trigger. Well, it's going to be here around the back. There you go. And then Ben, well, he's going to be over in that general direction. From our main starting farm, if we make our way to the north... We're going to find the secondary farm. This farm is going to have a silo as well as, like I said, a chicken coop. We have a farmhouse and we also then have a small shed for storing of small vehicles and implements. Directly to the east of that starting farm, sadly, we still have a defunct windmill. I really do wish that this was functional and was an actual working grain mill. Because we don't have a functional working grain mill on the map. Instead, the grain mill on the map, which is located right here, is simply a ginormous cell point. I just feel like maybe it's an opportunity lost. South of the main farm, well, we have our secondary farm, which is located right here. Our third farm, I guess I should say, to the south. And this farm, again, has a chicken coop. We have a silo system, we have a farmhouse, and we have a small shed. And all of these can be sold, like I mentioned earlier, so you start with a completely blank slate. Just to the north of that farm, we have the biomass heating plant, which is going to be a sell point for logs and wood chips. So from this angle, we can really see the rolling nature of these fields, but we can also see how we can easily merge them together. This map might not be the best map for placing of buildings on fields, unless you go in and really do some nice leveling going on here, but it is going to be able to easily merge a lot of these fields together if that's the type of thing you like to do. From the main farm, if we head south, again, we have our biomass heating plant, and we have the southern farm. If we now make our way a little bit towards the east, we're going to find our potato processing center. This is going to be one of our productions on the map. So we have our dump point. We have our spawn point for our potatoes. And I will tell you that I am struggling quite a bit with being able to see the light green floating icons. They just do not stand out to me at all. So there we have our wrench. The blue floating icons were significantly better in Farm Sim 22. Just to the north and west a little bit of the potato processor, we have the grain mill. And again, even when this map released in FS22 as a DLC map, I felt that this was an opportunity lost because we don't have a functional grain mill production. Instead, we have this massive building, and it's simply a cell point. And that's why I wish the windmill that we see up to the north there was actually maybe a production grain mill. Further to the east and right along the map border, we're going to come across our stone crusher right there. And I am still working with respect to trying to get used to the flight mode with FS25. Because when you currently enable flight mode, it also enables super speed. 
are a speedy player. And as a result, I end up going a lot faster than I want. And as a result, you get kind of really jerky motions. And it really, really does annoy me. I put in a bug report on that. Hopefully it will get resolved because just because I want to enable flight mode doesn't mean I want to fly around like a crazy fool. Now, to the north of the Stone Crusher, we're going to find our silo to transfer a product to and from the train. So we have our train dump and fill point. And then we have our dump and fill point over here for our silo. And we also then have a area here to sell some products. So this is both a sell point and a train rental area. We do have multiple lime stations on this map. And further to the north, we do have a bit of small forestry area up here. I wouldn't say that it is deeply treed or deeply planted with easily cut trees for a tree harvester, but we do have some trees over here on the far east in its forestry section. Here we have our sawmill, our production sawmill. And now we're going to make our way across the top part of the map. Here we have our windmill that I talked about, our northern farm. And now we're making our way over here to the town area. And this is where we're going to come across our canning factory or a preserved foods factory on the other side our, our preserved foods factory we do have the carpentry and new for fs25 we have a biogas plant just behind the carpentry facility also new for farm sim 25 is going to be the cement factory which is located right here. Now, this cement factory, as far as I can tell, does not include a spawn point to spawn stones. So, like on Riverbend Springs, we had the dredge right beside the cement factory that was spawning stones into a heap. I don't believe that we have that here with respect to this cement factory. And, of course, the cement factory is going to require a nice, steady supply of stones to keep this plant up and running. So I do think you're going to need to put your own stone spawner down, if you will, or double down and go crazy with collecting stones off of fields. But I think the stone spawner is probably going to be the course of action that most people take. Across the street from our cement factory, we have the renovated and redesigned animal dealer. And it's been redesigned because we now have animal pins in place with some animated animals. We also have buy points for slurry and manure over here. We have our bale sell point. We have our animal dealer pickup point. And, well, Kate, she's right there at the front door waiting to help you if you have any questions. We have our bakery located right here. We have a dump point along the street. We have a spawn point around the back. And our interactive point at the front door. David is right across the street. Just down the street, we have a grocery cell point. And right across from that, we have the piano manufacturer. Further down the main drag, well, we're going to find... Then we have a nice park over here to our right. And what's interesting about this map is these two trees here on this little island. As we collect the apples, they will appear here on these trees. And just because I'm super nice, I want to show you that your first apple is going to be located right here on this chess table. Like I said, they're golden apples. You're going to find them literally all over the place, mostly in people's yards. So just as a little hint there. Just as a frame of reference as to where we are now, we have our vehicle shop, which is right there. We have our main starting farm, and then we have the grain mill. 
This map includes really a nice architecture, and I'm really happy now that it has come out of DRM lock and is now available for use by modders because I think we have a ton of really, really nice buildings that are going to be able to be incorporated into other maps. Here we have the fueling station. We have a farmer's market cell point, and then it also includes the lime station. We have a soup factory. So we have our dump point over here to the left, our pallet point, our interactive trigger, and this sign lights up really cool at night, as does the water tower. And then we have a cell point in the dairy. So this is not a production point. This is simply a cell point. So there you go. And that's pretty much wrapping it up because if we continue to make our way around the southern part of the map, well, you're going to find yourself back over here to the southern farm and to the biomass heating plant. And then if we make our way north of that, well, you're seeing the animal, not the animal dealer, you're seeing the vehicle dealer and the main starting farm. So like I said, I'm really glad to see this map make its way into the base game for Farm Sim 25 because a lot of these awesome assets are going to be able to be brought into other Eastern European and Polish style maps going forward. And there's lots of really cool decorations on a lot of these houses, a lot of really cool fences and other architecture of high quality buildings. Gone hopefully will be the days of super low quality, low textured kind of Eastern European style buildings. I'm sure that we will see Silver Run Forest make its way into Farm Sim 25 as a mod map in the coming days to weeks. So please just hold out patience and hope, and I'm sure that we will eventually see that. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map, Zilonka, and how it looks. For the most part, it is just a conversion, dare I say, just a conversion to FS25, but it does include a few new productions with the BGA and the Cement Factory. Until next time, happy farming.